Hi, my name is Madhura Miskaski and I'm one of the co-founders and VP of product at Platform9. Um, and my topic for discussion today is uh, top five considerations for successful deployment of Kubernetes at scale. Now Kubernetes, uh, which is the leading open source framework for container orchestration, um, has risen to become the de facto standard for container management at scale. Um, however, if um, appropriate thought is not given in uh, deployment of Kubernetes clusters across your development and test and production environments at scale, then uh, deployment of Kubernetes can be a fairly daunting, a fairly challenging task. So let's talk about the top five considerations that um, every enterprise, mid to large scale enterprise should keep in mind uh, before planning for deployment of Kubernetes at scale. The first one is um, having a strong story about, around Kubernetes updates and upgrades. Kubernetes being an open source framework, um, a ton of innovation happens in the community um, and a new version of Kubernetes comes out every, um, every three months or so. You need to have a strong story to keep up with this pace of innovation, um, which means you must have the ability to upgrade to the latest version of Kubernetes with minimal to zero downtime about every quarter or so. Um, so that's the first one. The second one is what I like to call enterprise readiness with Kubernetes, right? So this includes a collection of things or, or features or attributes around um, everything from monitoring of your workloads to log collection to um, SSL termination, um, certificate management, um, network isolation. Um, this is a list of features that you would need um, in order to successfully run production Kubernetes environments at scale. The third one is um, hybrid or multi-cloud support. If you are a typical enterprise organization, you likely don't want to deploy Kubernetes just on a single endpoint. You likely want to deploy it on a diverse set of endpoints, including some private infrastructure and at least one popular public cloud provider. Um, and your Kubernetes solution, whether it's deployed by you or partnering with a vendor, must have the same consistent experience and same SLA, regardless of whether you're deploying Kubernetes on-premise or in a public cloud. The fourth consideration uh, must be around multi-tenancy. So you ideally want to support Kubernetes environment across um, a large scale of users, across development, staging, and production environments. Um, and you should have the ability for these users to sign in through some kind of single sign-on. You should have support for Kubernetes native RBAC um, and some kind of multi-tenancy that lets you separate these users into different teams. Um, so multi-tenancy is very critical. Um, and what goes along with it is some kind of network isolation policy so that your users can isolate their test workloads from their production workloads. So that's the fourth one, multi-tenancy. And the fifth one is developer productivity. So now that you have this platform ready for developers to consume at scale, um, the end users or developers must have some kind of self-service portal so that they can sign into this environment, regardless of where they're assigning it in from. Um, and then ideally, they should have some kind of application catalog for easy deployment of Kubernetes application. Um, there should be some sort of CI CD integration, um, some good registry management solution. Um, so all of these go under uh, the category of development productivity. So the fifth one is developer productivity. Um, and in summary, these are the top five considerations that any enterprise should keep in mind for successful large-scale um, Kubernetes deployment.